1946 birth cohort, the MRC National Survey of Health and Development. It started just after the war when there was a real spirit of optimism um, and parents felt this was a really important thing for their children to do because they would benefit from the new welfare state that was being developed at the time. Children of the 90s was started with the idea of trying to work out the combination between genetic factors, things that we inherit from our parents and, and ancestors, and things that we're exposed to in our lives, our, due to our lifestyles, where we live, uh, what we eat, a whole bunch of things, to under, try to understand what gives rise to health and common diseases during early childhood, and of course that's extended now to beyond childhood because our young people are now into their early adulthood. Staying in the study, I don't think it was particularly down to my mother or father. You realise that something's important about the study, that you're happy to be answering questions in the study, and it's never been a difficult thing to do. It's not an onerous task. The only time that I felt that I, I was going to pull out was when I was 15 years of age, pre-O level, I decided I, I, w I wasn't going to fill in the questionnaire that I'd been given by the head teacher. I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm, I've decided I'm not going to participate anymore. Well, he was so angry with me. He said, how selfish can you be? It, it, it hasn't been about you at all. It's about the future generations. And, um, and I never forgot that. I think the earliest thing I can remember is being asked to colour in a picture of a house. It was probably something to do with, you know, like, how children see things and like how things should be. But it was never like this, it was never pitched, at least not to me, as this big scientific thing that was going to benefit people in any way. It was just a case of, oh, you need to sort of come to this room now and do this thing and colour in this house and colour in the smiley face and tell us how you're feeling about your day, which at age like five or six, it's pretty sort of basic and normal. My most memorable moment of being the study, I find I've, I've forgotten a lot of it, but the one I really seem to remember is the questions around when we were 11, I'd, uh, I'd either did or had already failed the 11 plus and um, had to change schools because of it. And then the, all the questions that we were asked seemed to be very similar to the 11 plus questions. And I thought, oh no, not these again, I'm going to fail or I won't be able to do them. And that worried me a lot. Uh, that was the one that stuck in my mind mostly. I've enjoyed them more as I've got older because you, you're more aware of what's being asked and why. We are following a group of people from when they were born all the way through now until they're 70. And it's a large cohort of people, all of the same age, and it means that you can look at things over time to see how experiences, factors in one part of life may affect how people are doing in their later life. Do you think being involved in the study has given you a sense of kinship? We do feel more part of a group, and I, I can see that you, you guys um, use social media and, and very much are involved with each other. I didn't meet anyone from the survey between the age of 16 when there was a chap at school with me who was in the survey until I went to the 70th birthday party. I had never met anybody who was involved in our survey. So it was your catchment one week across the whole country? It was from the th uh, 3rd to the 10th of March 1946, nationally. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Getting together, I think, has been wonderful. You talk to people at a different age, because sometimes you might not meet them, particularly if you've got, even if I've got children, my children are now older than the, the people we met, met today. And it's been brilliant. This study and the studies that came after uh, have really led to changes in both broad and specific ways because they're a social barometer of what's going on in society. And so if people start talking, I don't know, about child abuse or alcohol consumption or whatever, they often come back to these studies to look at uh, what's going on in each of the studies and also to compare across the studies. It may take decades even for discoveries which are really scientifically important to be translated into things that we can do in, in healthcare or in any other aspects of people's lives to, to give them benefit. 
you volunteer oh, for we it, were, or were you selected? We were signed up in utero, so yeah. we didn't really have a lot of <laughs> chance to consent. Um, as we got older, it became more voluntary. I think I've largely stayed in the study because everyone I was at school with did it. I think I just quite like being part of it and knowing I'm making a difference, and you see a lot of the research. Is there something memorable of an activity that you have from taking part in the study? There was one recently um, that was um, at the 24 plus kind of focus clinic where um, you were supposed to wear some grey underwear to be able to stand in this large black kind of cubicle uh, where you'd have a 3D image taken of yourself. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't have that, so uh, I had to stand in there nude. So <laughs> that's kind of a quite quite a memorable one that all stayed in my mind. Um, but yeah, yeah. So just just things like that. Oh, really. that's you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would normally get brought with mum because obviously I was under the age of eighteen at that time. A little bit different now, but uh, it was kind of when you were sat in a room and you were talking about um, different experiences that you've had in your life you're very kind of conscious that actually when your parents are outside but I've always been informed that my information is confidential and everything becomes coded it's just that confidence that actually everything's looked after your information is protected. Has it made you more interested in science and uh, uh you know, the, the sort of things that they're using our data for. They get all our measures and then get to an endpoint um, and find out how it can help people. And I think, you're, you know, you've been in the study a long time, you know, it can have huge impact on um, different things in the news. And so I, th I think all the data is really amazing, to be honest. It's really an exercise in data collection. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, which has changed immeasurably. I mean, your study has had computers since the start. Uh, our study, um, they had files and boxes and forms to fill in and count. It must have been made an enormous difference. And I think, yes, it is, I've always been interested in, in data collection and the use of data. And I think as well from like studying science, like, um, and you study how like valuable a longitudinal study is, and then it's just like, oh, and I'm in one. Like that's really good as well. Yeah. I think I've stayed in the study because I, it's made me feel somehow special that you know somebody is interested in in. Um, me and uh, my feelings sometimes and uh, uh, what I do, my lifestyle. Um, but gradually you realise that you know it, it, it has a significance and it, it can actually alter government policies and things with, with all the uh, information that comes out of it. As time changes, the way people live changes. Uh, we, we live in a very different way now than we did um, post-war when, when the first study was started. So we're able to look across these cohorts and, and compare different exposures now with the exposures back then and see what their effects are in early childhood. Of course, one of the great advantages of Children in the Night is, is that because it was recruited during pregnancy, we can really look right back to the very beginning. And, um, and we're only appreciating now that the importance of not just early childhood but pregnancy as well in, in some of those late effects. Childhood matters for adult health, so we found how childhood uh, environment, childhood growth, uh, childhood neurodevelopmental factors uh, in different ways and for different reasons affect people's health in adult life places to focus on in the future in regards to research. Certainly cancer, um, cancer is obviously a big thing of today, um, affects a lot of people. Well I think dementia is something that we're all a little bit nervous about and uh, there, there are advances, they are finding the reasons why. But yes I think that's the, the biggest thing that we fear as we get older. Um, to lose your, uh, lose your mind. Maybe e-cigarettes, I think that's quite an interesting thing that's happening right now. It'd be interesting to see how it pans out. That and just keeping it going generally to see how we all change as we get older. Taking genetic traits from, say, how our parents' uh, genes affect us and then how our genes affect our children. Um, and things as simple as you know, eye colour and hair colour down to complex diseases and immunities to certain conditions. So I'd really like to see a bit more 
on that and then how uh, that can then be used to help the treatment of uh, genetic conditions. Many of the discoveries in the study take a long time to translate into health gains for the population and that's one of the things people need to understand about these long-term cohort studies. As a society we need to invest in a good start to life and we need to give people safety nets as they go through whether that's for their biological health or their behaviours or their social risk so that they can move into a healthier trajectory at each stage you know if it's possible and I think we can show at each stage it's important different things are important. It's trying to make a positive difference, which is all I really want to do.